Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting episode of Biographic, the show in which I, Matt, the Game Boy, will take you through the highs and lows of the Game Boy Library, one card at a time. This week we're going to be looking at one of my favourite titles on the Nintendo Game Boy, it's DuckTales. There's just something about a good licensed game that makes my heart flutter. If done right, they can encapsulate moments in time in a way that only artistic medium can. Of course, for it all to work, you need the right license, developers, and a solid team to make it come together. It could be said that this perfect storm in the licensed alliance of Capcom and Disney was like a hurricane. Hold Lee tightly onto the rights to Disney video games after publishing Hudson's Mickey Mouse Capade, Capcom decided it was time to make a Disney game of its own, pulling in a young team fresh from their premiere console effort on Mega Man to work on a game based off an all-new Disney IP. That team saw Takoro Fujiwara, producer, Kaiji Inafune on graphic design and direction, Yoshihiro Sakaguchi on sound programming, Yoshinori Takanaka designing the levels, and Hishigiro Tonomura composing the game's now legendary score. I won't go into details of this group's resumes, but this is essentially a Capcom dream team of the day. And the IP they were assigned to, you ask? Yes! The Adventures of Scrooge McDuck and his nephews Huey, Dewey and Louie, based on the fine comic book works of Karl Barks, which, on a side note, are incredibly unappreciated, especially outside of mainland Europe, where the duck universe of Barks, continued by the amazing Don Rosa, are overlooked by many in favour of more traditional comic books. Seriously, go read The Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck. It's fucking brilliant. Tangent aside, DuckTales was a very popular TV series during its 100 episode run in the late 80s to early 90s, mainly due to its high quality stories, animation and great characters. Naturally, as such a hot property, a video game was destined to happen, and oh boy am I glad it did. Originally released for the NES in 1989, DuckTales became one of the definitive games of most people's childhoods. Its stunning visuals, great score, and pixel-perfect platforming elevated this game into the higher echelons of NES Top 10 lists. A year later, Capcom made a version for the Nintendo Game Boy, and in doing so, improved on an already incredible game by making the levels suit the platform. DuckTales, if you haven't already realised, is an action platformer that draws very heavily on the Mega Man games. As Scrooge, you must scour the world in search of lost treasure, solving mysteries and in turn, rewriting histories. Naturally, even the most miserly of ducks need some form of self-defence to do this, while visiting the depths of the Amazon, Transylvania, the mines of Africa, the Himalayas and even as far afield as the moon. Fortunately, this is where Scrooge's trusty cane comes in. While the cane can't be used to beat enemies senseless, it can be used to golf swing blocks at a Scrooge's path, chip rocks at enemies, and more importantly, open the game's treasure chests. In place of the Mega Buster, by pressing down the B button, Scrooge will mount his cane and pogo. This is not only a successful form of attack, but also allows you to move faster and jump higher. Well, actually not in the Himalayas level, where pogoing will cause you to sink into the snow and fall prey to snow bunnies. Oh, perish the thought. There is only one annoyance with this form of transportation, however, as if you tap the very edge of a platform, there's a chance you'll dismount into an enemy, or more often than not, fall to your grisly demise. This of course can be a bit of a pain, as what DuckTales borrows from Mega Man most is its solid platforming. Whether in the depths of a mine or the heights of the moon, there is some amazing level design on display here. The enemy placement is rarely cheap, hidden items are abundant, but what makes this game an absolute triumph is its non-linear approach to level design. While it is true that Mega Man has already allowed the player to tackle the game whatever level order they wished, DuckTales takes this idea to its natural progression. 
Instead of simply clearing the game screen by screen, DuckTales allows the player to take alternate routes through each level via secret passages, warp mirrors, and seemingly death-inducing drops. As well as finding these secret routes, littered around each level are lots of hidden treasures for Scrooge to collect, something that surely inspired the Blue Bomber's later adventures. This treasure does seem like a bit of a wasted opportunity, however, as despite how fun it is to collect, it only influences your high score, not the ending like in the NES original. It would have been nice to buy extra lives or even a continue, as a loss of all your lives is a straight up game over. Fortunately though, the game isn't too difficult and offers three levels of challenge for the player. While this won't affect the enemy layer obstacles to overcome, it will give you more health. So I really recommend giving it a spin on easy if you want to get through this game very quickly. At the end of each stage is a boss battle that simply involves four cracks to the head with a cane that send the enemy packing, before rediscovering the treasure and adding another figure to Scrooge's fantastic fortune. Some of these bosses will be familiar to those with knowledge of the Duckaverse, like Magicka Dispel and Flintheart Glongold, as well as some of these created especially for the game, like Count Dracula Duck. Speaking of fan favourites, Huey, Dewey, Louie and Webby are dotted around the various stages, offering hints of Scrooge, as well as the occasional appearance of Launchman McQuack to shepherd Scrooge in and out of stages at will. Those familiar to the series won't fail to spot other fan favourites throughout the game, but I don't want to give them all away. The biggest gripe I have with DuckTales is the need to go through the Transylvanian portion of the game three times. Once to collect the treasure, once to get the key to the mine, and then again to beat the end boss. It's absolutely crazy, as after such a breathtaking game up until that point, it does feel very lazy of the design team. Of course, the one thing this game is renowned for is its score. Some people really look down on the Game Boy version of the music, as they believe Capcom should have remade it to suit the hardware. To that I say, bullshit! The Game Boy score of DuckTales is some of the finest music on the system. The slightly slowed down version of the Moon theme is a dream to listen to, not to mention how great the theme tune sounds here. All in all, DuckTales is a somewhat overlooked Game Boy game. Despite it being Capcom's best selling game on the system, it is often looked down on next to its NES older brother, or by people not willing to practice the at first seemingly difficult to master Pogo. If you've played and passed up on DuckTales, you owe it to yourself to go back and give it a go. It's a fun platformer full of beautiful visuals and catchy tunes. While you may be tempted to simply get DuckTales remastered, I'd at least play through one of the 8-bit versions first. As, as much as I love remastered, some people find it overly story heavy, while the originals are purely about the gameplay. ANNOUNCEMENT! Yes, that's right folks, this is the start of another themed month that I'm going to call JULICENSE! Where I'm going to look at my favourite licensed games for the Game Boy, obviously starting with DuckTales. Now, there will be some more titles that are part of the holy matrimony that is Capcom and Disney coming up, but I will slip in some other titles in between. If you have any particular favourites that you'd like me to look at, then please leave a comment down below and I will make sure to get to them at some point during the month, because hey, there'll be five episodes. And that brings us to the end of another biographic, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have enjoyed. Sorry, I'm a bit stuffy. I have a major cold at the moment. But I still wanted to get out an episode for you guys. So hopefully the change in my voice wasn't too annoying. If you have liked this episode despite this, you may want to subscribe and maybe tell some other people you think may be interested in the channel. Why not check out some of our biographic videos where I promise you I sound more normal than this, looking at the highs and lows of the Game Boy Library one cart at a time. Some Boy Curious titles where I look at some bootlegs and oddities for the Game Boy, as well as the All the Glory section where I don't talk so you won't hear a muffled Welshman speak about games. And those videos will give you full long plays of particular titles I've already covered in biographic episodes but with all the deaths cut out, giving you all of the glory and none of the faff. Until next week, Game Boys and Girls, where I'll be back with another licensed title, Game On. <laughs>